to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. And welcome to Cash Daddies. We are banking fatties. That's right, dude. Joining me as always are the three amigos of just winning, dude. These guys are always on fire. Of course, on the ones and twos is the real G, little E, Evan Hands, young Christian warrior. How are you, brother? I'm great. How are you guys? Doing well. And of course, we've got the ass to ass brothers who are just undefeated week in, week out. A lot of like the fucking Legion of Doom of the early 80s pro wrestling. When you're like, who's going to stop these guys? Nobody. Uh, the one and only out of, uh, he's out of New York, but now he's in the dirty South. How he doing? How are you, bud? Yeah, good, baby. Good. Feeling solid. Feeling great. Was, was it a good week for you? Good week. Good week. Yeah, it was a little less trading the week before. I got a funny feeling things are going to pick up this week. Uh, but we're uh, we're looking solid. We're looking good going in tomorrow. And his transitioning friend. We know him and still love him. <laughs> Chris Neff, everybody. How are you, Chris? I'm fabulous. Yeah, you things are, are good. Chris, you are on fire. Uh, Chris is uh, doing a lot of great interacting with you, the listeners. So just, hit, you know, we call our listeners are called readers. They're readers. Okay? The Lord readers respect. and the readers are uh, if you we are a fully interactive show. Uh, a lot of you guys are asking what day we record. So we are recording this Sunday on uh, Valentine's Day. It will be put out on uh, Monday morning. Evan, you wanted to make a little announcement. Yeah, we're uh, you guys on Twitter, you guys killed it. Um, we got that 69 retweets, nice. So, we're going to be recording twice a week now, two episodes. One will drop on Monday, one's going to drop on Thursday. Yeah, and just to add on to that, uh, because we're recording on Sundays and we know the market opens Monday, although not <laughs> tomorrow because it's a holiday, I doubt you knew that, Sam. Um, we will put out those picks Sunday night so you have an idea. Uh, in advance and then the same thing with Wednesday we'll record on Wednesday drop our picks late in anticipation before the Thursday market bell did you know the market was closed tomorrow for president yeah Day? dude it's president's day even though nobody gives a fuck about the president we're, we're having a day off you know what I care about dead what? motherfucking presidents all right and that's why we're having this show so pay attention well that pretty soon we'll be Harriet Tubman dude now fun fact do you know which dollar they're going to get uh, take it, take the what president they're taking off for Harry Jackson. Tubman? And do you know why they're doing that? Yeah, because he partied too hard at the White House and almost burned it down. No, it's because he got rid of the Federal Reserve. Okay. Why is and it they bad? hate him? They hate him. So they're going to put Harriet Tubman on there. So no one get no one bitches and moans. Okay. That's why they, who, what was that famous play about the one president? What was that guy? Um, what was the big play where all the gay guys with AIDS uh, uh, sang and dance? What was that one? Hamilton. About the, Hamilton. Yeah. Right. Jesus. Hamilton. He wasn't, he wasn't a president. He was the secretary of treasury. Well, that's why they do it about yeah. him because he was pro federal reserve. Jackson was kiss dicks, dog. Get out of here with that, that crap. And that's why they tried to kill him. And then when he got rid of it, that's why they uh they're getting him off the dollar right now. So that's a little fun. So are those twenties with him on it going to be collectors' items? I don't know, man. I don't know, dude. But you know, Dana, Chris, you know Dana. Dana hit me up, and she goes, you know, because everyone's been making this run on silver. She's like. Look at this. I th she goes, I think I have a bunch of these. And they're the JFK silver dollars that are now worth like 10 grand each. JFK so silver dollars? It must be yeah. a specific kind because I got a few. No, they're silvers. They're silver coins. They ain't uh, worth 10 grand unless he autographed them. No, dude. <laughs> they're like old school. Sil they're old school silver. Like, 
when you go buy silver, dude. You're, yeah, you know, like, they give you coins. So you're telling me that there's there's a dollar coin that was. Um, well, it's not a dollar it's, coin. It's a, it's like it's. A, I, I shouldn't have said a dollar. Okay, it's a fifty cent. If a fifty cent piece, I have no. Like it's not a fifty cent piece. There's it's no like way it's buying worth silver. Out. You go get like a silver, an ounce of silver. It's in a oh, coin. Oh, it's an ounce with yeah. his face on it. It's not yeah. like a coin. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, a lot different than a dollar being worth ten thousand well, okay. dollars. All right. It's already Rocky Waters here on Cash Day. Hey, I guys, can't wait for it to be over. Real quick, real quick. Uh, thank you to all. You helped us get in the top 125 on iTunes. That's pretty great. If you want to keep it going, please rate and review. Go to Even if you're not on Apple, try to get on there. Rate and review. Give us a five-star, and uh, maybe we'll start reading the best ones on there. Sam, Help us with that. How does it feel to be a buy guy only guy who passed the buy guys? That's what I. Oh, saying. to be a buy guy who's uh, passed the buy guys it feels yeah. great, dude. Thank you, thank, thank you. Feels great. Feels great. You know, it's very interesting. We blew people, right by them. Yeah, and they they they're pissed because they're usually the ones doing the blowing, right? Uh, it's better than being in front of them. Right? No, or why? behind them. That's what I said. It's I better to be in front. Be, I don't Listen, think you want to be near them. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, dude, this is a dude, we'll take those gay dollars, Neff. Okay. You know, you may not like gays, but your face loves it. I mean, totally. I mean, you totally have gay face, by the way. And, anyways, we love gay dollars here. Okay. Any gay dollars, dude, we got a twink on a show. Young Evan, dude, he'll dance for dollars, dude. Throw that guy in a nice little cash daddy thong. And get those gay dollars going. I'm going to start in Lonely Fans. There you go. Making bank, bro. So, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, basically being – I got to watch my us, by the way. That's the next thing. I'm going to watch my us. So, basically, thank you so much, and let's keep the party rolling. Guys, how how did you guys do last week? I smashed it because I listened to my picks. Yeah, it was a good week, man. I mean, my the one stock that I pushed, DSX, broke through to three. And, I mean, I made money on the calls. If I would held them, holy shit, I would have, instead of making 100%, I would have made close to 200% because it finished at, like, 360. Um, much higher than I thought it would go. And it's, and it's, and it's one that's steadily eking up. It was a good week last week. for uh, And for Howie, it was buy and hold. I was just holding this stuff. And it was just going up. I didn't do a lot of trading last week. Um, probably do a little more this week. Sam, you should be up huge after I told you uh, to buy Zekin and you agreed that you would. So how did that work out for you? No, I, I, things got busy, bro. Things but you did say you were going to buy. It. I went double down on that game, that, that, that yeah, betting man. on e-game stock. And I've lost a little. I lost like $19, but that's okay. I'll be up know. a little later. I don't know how this is possible because I'm up 102% because, on it. Yeah, well, because you I told bought him it to at 13. Neff, you I told bought, him to buy it. It was like way the hell up there. I, I, no, 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 that's not Neff's that's fault. Not that's true. all my fault because I got Thank a little you. greedy because I was seeing like I was making money. I made like a couple hundred bucks. And I was like, damn, I'm going to go in again. Oh, and then I the bought top? it at 13. Well, I bought it. When Neff told me the first time to buy it, it was at five. Thank you. Oh, and then shit. I bought it at eight, and then I'm like, "Fuck it, this thing's going to the moon." I bought it at thirteen, and yeah, now 13. I'm now I'm walrusing it right now. I'm just walrusing <laughs> it. Uh, <laughs> speaking of double dicking, um, I do have a, a, a slight. Uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll wait on the big announcement later, but I want to address a reader question because we throw out bangers, and then the question is, what do you do with them? And I keep getting this question, which is, how do I know when to sell? Now, if I knew how to answer that question, I wouldn't fucking be here. It is literally, <laughs> it is literally <laughs> the toughest question in the history of the world. It's bigger than what happens when we die. It's bigger than, can, do animals have feelings? Nobody can tell you, or souls, nobody can tell you when is the right time to sell. Howie, you've been around the block longer than I have. Certainly you have some insight on when to sell. What's, what, is your, what is your advice when somebody says, hey, uh, thanks for this amazing stock pick. I'm up. What do I do with it now? 
Yeah, there's so many factors that go into that. Now, is it a tax deferred account or is it a taxable account? That's huge because if you buy a stock and that stock goes up 30% in two months and, and your broker or everyone says, you know, this might be the peak and you don't want to sell it because you don't want to pay those short-term capital gains because they're a lot more than long-term capital gains if you can hold that stock a year. When you, you say wanna... when you say capital gains, you're saying a tax. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'll explain this quickly. Uh, if 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 you buy uh, uh, Nest stock GMLB, GMBL, and you, you you GMBL, and you buy it at five dollars and it goes to thirteen, you're like, damn man, that's a nice profit. I should probably get out of it. But if you're in a high tax bracket. Uh, not even high. If, 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 if you if you don't want to pay short term capital gains, which are more are more than long term capital gains, which is holding a stock a year or more, uh, then you're in a predicament, man. What do I do now? I always tell people, listen, uh, it's better to pay the capital gains and take a gain than to take a loss unless unless if it's towards the end of the year. Uh, October, November, December, and you got a ton of gains, like maybe Neff will have this year. Already to do. Yeah, if you got too many capital gains, you know what a good thing to do is? Buy a stock and that stock tank 50%, because you can sell it at the loss and you can offset that loss against your positive gains. That's a good thing. That helps you not pay as many taxes. But to get back to Chris's point, it goes both ways. If you buy a stock and it goes up 20, 30, 40%, there's nothing wrong with putting a good till canceled stop loss in, which means you might put it in 15% below uh, the 30% gain you have. So if any time throughout the year that stock starts to tank and it hits that 15% mark, no matter what happens, you made 15%. Uh, it works on the downside too. Let's say you buy a stock like Sam bought at 13, GM, GMBL, right? Let's say you buy it at 13 like, like Sam did. Like and I Sam's told like, I'm Dude. learning. And, and, it, and all of a sudden it starts tanking. And Sammy Rookie gets all nervous and starts sending us 30 fucking texts. <laughs> I'm like, we have a text. I'm like, should I sell it now? And they're like, yeah, you, whatever, you, paper hands. <laughs> you get... You gave me flashbacks about every old lady I ever had as, as a client when the stock dropped two dollars. <laughs> Howie, what do I do? Jesus yeah. Christ, what do I do? I'm down thirty five dollars, and so you know, in Sam's point, you know, he doesn't want to see it go to zero. Should he sell it now? Should he buy more? Should he hold on? Look, if you like the stock long term, hold on, or do a dollar cost average, like we said, buy a little bit more. Um, if it makes you too nervous and it drops down to eight, seven, you get real nervous, Jesus Christ, sell out of it. Take your loss off, set it against gains. But back to Chris's point, man, it's a tough thing to tell people when to sell on both sides. It's tough. It, you got to have goals. When you buy a stock, you got to have a goal. If would it's going say, in here, I'm selling. Would you say the best time is when you feel comfortable with that right with the wins the the gains you've made right yeah. like if you're like well this is good obviously i would love double this if i if i could see the future but if i'm right now i'm happy with it it's like chris said it's better to leave with something than nothing right well here's the hey. thing yeah go ahead when when it comes to capital gains the the rule of thumb at least right now is if you hold for a year your capital gains are going to be 15 percent if you're under that, you're going to be taxed at your current um, tax bracket. In income, ordinary income. income. Ordinary income. So for example, mine is like 26% right now. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's something that factors into my head. But if I have a stock that just massively skyrockets right out of the, you know, in three months, and I'm, I've, you know, I've got a couple that are up like 160%, I'm going to take, take some profits off the table. I'm, um, and, and pay the taxes on it. And then probably just free roll with, you know, uh, you know, what I have left on the table. Um, so a lot of people do that theory, which is take everything off the table that you're, you won and free ride on the rest. I'm not that aggressive, uh, especially if I'm in a stock that I believe in. And I do believe in GMBL. So I haven't sold anything on GMBL right now, just, you know, for some perspective. 
And, and another thing, too, is you do have people, that, especially people that work for their companies, like uh, they work at McDonald's, they work at IBM, uh, they, they work for Caterpillar, they're and, they're buying, and they're buying this stock every single day. And you got people who are like, look, man, it's a good business model. Hold on. It's work- you, you think there's a lot of people that work at McDonald's <laughs> that are buying <laughs> stock? Is that yeah. what you think is going on, Howie? If Howie, you oh, own the hash browns, and you work in the let's say you work in human resources at McDonald's, <laughs> or or you actually own McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, with that minimum wage going to fifteen dollars, we're gonna have a ton of new investors making Big Macs. Yeah, I well, I mean, good luck with that, dude. I, I just think everything's gonna just get more expensive. To yeah. uh. Any, anyways, the point back besides you believing people at work at McDonald's invest in Wall Street. Outside of that, what, no, you got you got people, that, you got people you making. You got people that uh that work at companies like that or big banks that have literally they hold these stocks for 20, 30, 40 years. You got guys at Microsoft that are multi-millionaires. They were secretaries there 25 years ago. Um, and it's true. I mean, they get stock options. They just hold them and hold them and hold them and the fucking stock every three or four years. It splits, it doubles, it splits, it doubles. And I know a guy that started delivering, uh, work and driving a truck at UPS. Okay. He started in like 88, 89. He just retired UPS. All he was, was a driver. He's got about $1.4 million in stock. Just because he bought the stock purchase plan every month. Not a lot. He bought a few shares every single month. But shit, 40-something years, and look what UPS has done over 40 years. This guy's a fucking millionaire. He was a driver for UPS. Same same, same thing with FedEx. I think that's a great idea. I think that's really important that people hear this. Like, you don't have to go... For- you listen, no. if, 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 if investing's like baseball, you don't have to be a home run hitter every time. No. Right. No, it's just like, I mean, I, Chris Knapp and E they, they live and breathe. Like they, they live in a boiler room. They're going to, Chris is going to move E into a fucking his house. And we're never going to see these guys anymore. They're just going to be smoking cigarettes and just <laughs> yeah. daydreaming. Like, you like cats, they, right, Evan? I got three <laughs> of them. Sure. We're gonna go over. To, we're gonna go over to Neff's house, and we can't find Evan. And Sam's just gonna say, "Bring out the gimp." The yeah. <laughs> They're just gonna, but they live for that action. But like me, like it's like why I never got into fancy baseball. That is a every day, every moment kind of thing. So you know, you have to depend on what you want. And there are stocks that you know pay yeah. well over time. Be- speaking of, of fantasy uh, baseball and contests, I, I have an announcement. Um, I know we've discussed it uh, outside the show um, and uh, we, we need to put it out there. We are going to introduce the first annual Cash Daddy's Little Johnny Rock Fuck Green Donkey Dildo Trading Challenge. Now, I know that sounds like a mouthful and it is, but what we've decided to do is start- By the way, uh, real quick. When was that name discussed? Was there a, a was that sneaked in? Is, is our text right getting like a bill in Washington where you guys just flood it and then then you slip in something so I can't read it in the yeah. million of the d- dear diary entries that Chris and F does on this text thread? Like when did we discuss that name? Do you want me to pull up the exact date? It's yeah, what, it wasn't discussed. Oh and what was the vote, by the way? Did I get an abstain vote? What What was the vote on that? Was it three you to... Were, you were on a plane, and oh, uh, the oh. rest of us voted, but because it was majority and it was three, your vote didn't matter, so we just went with it. So just again, oh, to so announce... what is what Evan, it. a free slave now? He gets a vote? <laughs> He's an indentured yeah. servant. Yeah. So anyway, let me explain to you what the first annual little Johnny Rock fuck cash daddy's green donkey dildo trading challenge is. Okay. okay. <laughs> right. The idea is this. We <laughs> want to find out who the best trader is. Okay. And we don't want to just have it be with us. So what we're going to do is we're all going to throw a thousand into the kitty. I'm going to throw a G. Howie's going to throw a G. Sam, you are a G. So it goes without saying. That so here's what I'm going to do. Since Evan is broke and selling his ass on fucking Craigslist, even though it's illegal, I've decided 
since I'm new to this, I'm going to throw up a G for me and Evan will be okay. one team. Okay. So That's Evan fair. will be doing the, the trading for me. Got and it. you guys will each do your own. And at the end of the day, Evan and I will split the profits. But wait, it gets There's better. more. There's more. So that means we have 3,000 in the kitty. So winner would take 3,000. What we're going to do, the winner's only going to take two because we're going to take 1,000 of that and set it aside for our readers. And it's a free contest for our readers and a chance to win that extra 1,000. What if we you can't? What if the guy that wins can't read, dude? Readers, <laughs> readers is so punk rock because nobody oh, reads it. <laughs> Are you ready, readers? Are you ready to read? So the rules are going to be very simple. We're all going to agree that you put a thousand in, and you can only trade uh, stocks, coin, no options trading whatsoever, because we're going to have to adhere to the pattern uh, day trading limit. So we're not gonna be able to do a bunch of smash and grabs, interday swings like I do, like I did with Microvision last week, okay. in and out of the stock. For, so you're you know, gonna have to write down this, dude, head. so people know exactly. Got what it, just let me finish sucking are. my own dick. Jesus. You know, <laughs> nice 30% swing interday last week on Microvision. Uh, we're not gonna be doing smash and grabs. So the point is, the rules are gonna be simple. If you're interested, uh, this isn't going to start like next week or next month. Uh, we need to allow everybody to separate, set up separate trading accounts because I'm going to set up a separate account from my regular portfolio so I can just have $1,000 in there. And the same thing with our readers. And just so you know, if the readers try and pull a fast one on us and a scam, we will find out. We have how, auditors. How will we find out? Okay, let me explain to you how Well, don't give work. away all of it, but you, there no, is a simple. way to find out? It's a, yeah, all we do is this. We, we will go through your transaction history, make sure that you only deposited $1,000, and at the end of the year, we will audit them and verify who the winner is. It's very simple. So uh, if you want to be a part of the contest, um, let us know on Twitter. Eventually, we will get a sign-up sheet so everybody can email uh, Evan and be a part of the contest. It will be free. And, um, you know, we besides a thousand dollars, no, no, but that's their thousand dollars. <laughs> okay, okay. The point is you can't, you can't open a paper trading account because, and, and enter this contest because nobody trades legit when it's in a paper account, it's not real. So okay. they're, they're going to take balls ballsier moves. We so want, how are we going to confirm that they actually have a thousand dollars in an account? I just told you, do you want me to okay. tell you again? Nope. I heard the first time that was for everybody at home. They're on their honor, but put it to you this way. If Good you luck. were going to try and claim the win, we need, we will go through the account and make sure there aren't multiple deposits uh, exceeding a thousand dollars. It's very easy. All accounts have them. You do a search history on your transactions. And as long as a thousand dollars wasn't put in or more, more than a thousand, you're eligible to win that thousand dollars. And are well, we doing this all? On I want to do platform? a little something different, dude. I'm just going to throw this out because what you're asking is somebody to win a thousand dollars by betting a thousand dollars. I That's think on top of it. Well, the two, what the two thousand. So if everybody goes in, what, what's, what can they win? They, they get to what, win whatever they win in their account. Plus the thousand dollars that we're throwing in. What, what if, if, what, if, what, what about, about this? Go ahead. What about, Everybody has to enter for a thousand dollars, but nine hundred of it's used, and a hundred dollars goes into kitty. Here's the thing: this is a free contest, okay? I don't want to be right. liable for anybody losing anything. Yes, so it's their well, money. Invest they at your own risk, you knuck, you readers. But we, but we also, before we do this contest, we, we got to set perimeters. <laughs> yes. Readers, we need to find print. <laughs> invest at your own risk. Go ahead, Allie. This is going to turn into a fucking clusterfuck. Yeah. I'm just telling you right now. This is going to be... Johnny Rockfuck is going to end up taking this whole pot. And we're never going to see him again. No, no. It, it, you guys are missing the point. Everybody spends their own money. And then we check in with them at the end of the week, see who's on the leaderboards, etc. They have their own money that they're winning in their own account or losing. But whoever wins, 
gets an additional thousand from us because we're going to play against them. I like, I like, I like, like on whenever we started April 1st, April 2nd, every person has to pick one stock and we get, we got, they got to pick one stock. And at the end of the year, who's ever stock is up the most wins. That's too, that's too boring. I need, I need to be able to make moves, man. I know, but yeah. just picking one stock. What do you think? E? Don't you think you need to mix it up a little bit? I, I yeah, agree. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough monitoring what everyone does. And with today's software, people are going to be able to put up whatever that, I mean, I know I could pay some schlep rock to come and say, look, Holly, you're up 311% in two months. I trust our readers and I don't believe, I, I believe in good in the world. <laughs> and I don't think I mean, dude, he owns people. cats. Of course he believes. In <laughs> I, I don't think we're going to have people coming in to try and scam a thousand dollar win. Okay? I know at least 20 of them that are, that are like right <laughs> hey, now listen, scamming as we listen, talk. I am putting this in. I'm putting this on Chris Neff. This will be his job <clears throat> to monitor him and Lil E. That will be their job is to monitor this to the best of their abilities. Yeah. It's not going to be a hard thing to do. So the All point right. is, once okay. we, here's the thing. If you're a reader out there and you're reading the show right now, what you want to remember is if you have an account and you want to play in our contest, you'll need to create a separate account. Just put a thousand dollars in it. And then once we have the contest start date, we'll announce what it is. It'll be a couple of months down the road. So people can order open additional accounts and then we'll have a start date and an end date. And we'll go from there. We could actually even look at getting some software and uh, and setting up like because I've been in contests. I've been in stock picking contests before where they give you a uh, you just log in and they give you a thousand dollars and you have a code just like fantasy football. You have a, a, a code name and everything. You can trade as much as you want. And at the end of the year, somebody wins. We could do that. Um, I guess we can look into it. The point is, let's gauge the interest and see, you know, what, uh, yeah. what our readers think if they're interested in it. And then, speaking of readers, we do need to address um, the poll question. Uh, a lot of a lot of people out there would like to uh, be referred to a specific title, and um, they've been uh, uh, contributing ideas. And then, what we're going to do is we're going to pick the best four and put up a poll so they can decide what they want to be called. So it's not the readers. I think <laughs> it'll probably be the readers. Here's I the love, thing. But here's the thing. It's so insane. I will go with the readers. I just the think thing. the readers. Here's great. the thing. I, I, don't, I don't want Cash Daddies to be a dictator. Okay. Let's leave it up for the people to decide. There's some people out there with some very good names. Yeah. And we could narrow it down to four and let them choose. So, and, unless you guys want to be dictators, I'm cool with the readers too. I, oh, I want. Readers. How about the billionaire boys and the billionaire girls? Okay, so you want two separate names? Well, I mean, like, well, yeah, I mean, the billionaires. How about the billionaires? We'll just I call think... them the. Oh no 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 no! The trillionaires. They should be called the trillionaires. <laughs> the zillionaires. The zillionaires. Wow. The trillion wow. zillionaires. Well, we'll see if anybody likes that idea. I love the trillionaires. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, it sounds crazy. What's the name of it again? It is the first annual. No, Cash it's not. You don't call it annual. It is the inaugural. It's there's no first annual. By there's the way, only there an are inaugural. People commenting yeah. <laughs> in the threads that they love the way that you can now pronounce that word. Say it again. Inaugural. <laughs> it's inaugural. How's it pronounced? It's inaugural. 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 <laughs> inaugural. 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 inaugural inaugural hey dude you know what english is fluid bro and it not depends here. on what yeah not here yeah it's it's, it's fluid. okay it's the inaugural cash daddy's little johnny rock fuck green donkey dildo trading challenge are you happy whoa okay. the trophy we, will we actually, should make a donkey dildo that's stature. the trophy that's the trophy it's green and you get to hug it and you get to go up and down on it once you win. Well, we lost all the Christians on the show. <laughs> well, now we only got heathens right now and cat people. That's oh, it. Oh, <laughs> God damn. Holy shit. All right. We're going to get to some serious investment talk here. All right. So, so um, yeah, I guess we can get into that. We can get into what, what do we like this week. You guys do your stocks, and I'll get into my uh, digital currency. 
Well, let's let's save the stock picking to the very end. Yeah, okay. I think so too. You let, let me let, let me let's talk about Bumble real quick because that was the first IPO in a long time, man. And uh, yeah, Nap wanted great... to bring it up, and we just forgot to do it, so we swing right. and a miss on that one. Yeah, and real quick, we want to apologize to the readers about not bringing up the Super Bowl picks as well because that was a big thing. Um, Tampa crushed, obviously. Oh, and everybody... shit. That's right. Yeah, yeah you I got crushed again. Yep, that's all right. Evan's got a tab. You owe me 240. Yeah. Uh, Brenton lost. And then um, this, of course, will stop Have you happening. talked to him? Has he paid up? Of course he paid up. He's a gentleman. He paid up like five minutes. He paid up 10 minutes left in the game. He was like, <laughs> dude, this is over. Take the money, please. Come so, on, take the money. The class act. But again, with the recording going on twice a week, I think we'll, we'll uh, stop forgetting as much because our brains are so fried. So uh, to the IPO thing, we've had a lot of readers asking about IPOs, Bumble IPO last week. Um, Howie, do you mind uh, telling the readers because we have questions about people saying, how do I get in on an IPO yeah. before it pops? Because you did. Yeah. Well, yeah. Don't tell a lot of people that. But look, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go over IPOs, man, because I used Dude, to Dude, I feel like we're going to break laws that I don't even know are laws. And I'm just oh. going to be sitting in a fucking courtroom, bleeding from my b-hole, going, what did I do? What did I yeah. do? I'm going to get assassinated. That man, he did everything. I'm definitely going to get off. There's no doubt. I'm going to get off by an investment bank. There's no doubt about it. But IPOs, I used to, when I was a broker, I used to have people call me, hey, you look at the, you work at the largest investment bank around. You guys are bringing uh, Priceline.com public. How can I get some shares? It's going to be crazy. Look, man, if, you're, if, if you don't have an account, with a Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, UBS, JP Morgan. If you don't have an account there with, I don't know, 10, 15, $20 million, you're not getting any IPO. That's just the way it works. Uh, what an IPO is, uh, take a, we'll, we'll use Bumble, for example. Bumble came out, I think, on like Thursday. Mm -hmm. It's a stock that it, it, they put it in your account. The broker will put it in your account at $43 a share. So you may have 100 shares at 43. As soon as that IPO opens, it opens at 75, 76, 77. That's what Bumble opened at on Thursday. So in other words, you're up 30 points already in that thing, man. You're, you're already up 30 before it even started trading. So, so they can be, at most, more likely than not, they're good investment vehicles if you can get one but let's go back to where wall street is the most crooked place in the world the little guy can't get ipos man uh when when i i think jp morgan was the lead on bumble but when they when they bring that ipo public 70 80 percent of that ipo is owned by institutions uh, uh big banks uh hedge funds pensions people Funds with hundreds of millions of dollars, they get those shares first. And then JP Morgan gets the next biggest amount. They may get a few million. Uh, everybody who's a secondary underwriter on that, such as I think it was, uh, I think Morgan Stanley was on there. Uh, I want to say Bank of America. It might have been Deutsche Bank. Uh, those guys get the rest. So, man, if you're a little dude, unless you know somebody uh, or you have millions of dollars you're not getting an ipo man so, so doom and gloom there's no way for them to get in no chance no so how how low how long down the line does the average joe like us have to wait to get a piece of that action you we can, can buy get it, it the same, same day you it's could have bought it at 75 bucks a share on thursday as soon as but why would you like chris chris had a good point well, what did it like, go up to it it won it 84.12. Yeah. Unbelievable. I, the system my, is just my so broker sold the rigged. 75. It's unbelievable. It is. It is. It is. And that's when you want to talk about being rigged. That's rigged because the little guy can't get those. You can't. And like, if you call any of those firms and say, hey, I, I used to have clients that used to call me and say, yo, you guys are taking uh, UPS public or you're taking so-and-so public. <laughs> hey, can I get 50 shares? I have 
500,000 with you. And I'd say, yeah, if you get 5 million with me, I can get you 50 shares. Unbelievable. If you get, if you, if you give me 10 million, I can get you a hundred shares. And that's how it works, man. Because the regular average Joe retail broker, broker, they don't get a lot of these shares either. So the thing popped Thursday, went to 75. Uh, and, you know, I had people saying, hey, I don't like Bumble. I don't think it's going to be a great stock. Can we short it? You can't short an IPO for 30 days. Can't buy uh, options on it either. Well, options, you can actually buy, I think, after the third day. Two weeks? Oh, I thought, if, it, was a, I thought it was a couple weeks. I think it's three. It used to be three days. Jesus. If, But then you got to make sure that it's traded. I mean, the CBOE or somebody had or filled it. They got to have it on their options exchange, um, which it may not be. It may take a few the weeks. The jackals are already it's, it's three circling days. on the shorting, huh? Three days. It's three days. Yep. It, it used to be three days before you could buy buy and sell options on. Still it. is. But you know, I used to tell people, it's. Uh, <laughs> I used to tell people, man, IPOs are something that they're they're useless, man. I mean, it, if you if you see it pop. Maybe a couple weeks later, if you don't like the company, uh, you know, buy puts on or something. But it's really, it's just a, a useless uh, thing that, Here's you know. Here's the thing about that app, and this is kind of like what I'm going to get into when I talk digital currency, is like, what are they selling? They're not selling anything not on Bumble. You are the product. Right. So like, it's all going to be like forced ads on you. And that's where they're going to make their money. And it's like. Well, by the way, this is why Facebook stock just got, no, I got it right now. You know where they're going to make their money is on the data. They're going to sell your data. So that's what happened with Facebook. Facebook no, wasn't making money. They were losing money. They're like, fuck, we got to sell the data. And that's how they made all their freaking money was selling your data. Data is the new oil. Okay. That's why, you know, I, obviously this is a different show, but in the Tim Paul hat world, they talk about, oh, they're going to shut down the internet. Oh, they're going to do this. Well, the truth is they can't because some of the biggest companies in the world now, like Apple, Amazon, Google, these companies, that's their bread and butter is data, 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 data. If they shut it down, then they, the, the whole thing collapses. Okay. And you're like, well, they can switch it out. Well, it's my whole thing, again, to go to baseball. The problem I have with analytics and baseball now is that they're doing analytics on analytics. You know, you're like, you're, yeah. you're already, like, you have this fake, you've been playing this analytics games. These aren't real numbers anymore. And that's what that's what would happen if they take off the internet and they replace with a new internet, which they completely control. There won't be any free will, so people can't understand. So that's ultimately what Bumble will be making their money off. The idea that we're going to sell all these young people's data on who they're looking to date and what they're looking to buy. And what's interesting about Bumble, and, and this is really always watch this on an IPO. If you see an IPO, like Bumble originally was supposed to come out, I think at around $36 or $37. High these 20s, are, I these, what was it? I think it was high 20s. Yeah. You know what? Originally, I think it was high 20s. Then it went to 35. Then it went to 43. Now, if you're a big investor or you know somebody and you can get shares of Bumble, that's a great sign. When you see that your price is going up versus down in, in these greedy ass investment banks, instead of issuing 100 million shares, they're like, wow, this thing is huge demand. Let's issue 150 million or 200 because we make that much more. When there's that much demand and, you're, and your price on your IPO is going up versus down, that's you know that thing's gonna pop. Let me uh, ask you I, something about. I've an had IPO. IPOs, Sam. One second. I've had IPOs where the initial price offering was twenty, and then we bring it public, and on the day of, it goes down to fourteen. You know that thing's a piece of shit. You know that when that thing pops, it's gonna maybe go up ten cents and then end up down for the day. Go ahead. Who gets the money on the IPO? Like, is it the company? that gets an influx of cash who actually, if I'm selling stock in Chris Neff cats, right? Our cats About are time. the best cats. Okay? They are. I'm selling Mom, these stock Mom, in these sweeters and Millicent. Yes. Like these are the cats are the best cats out there. 
there, and it skyrock. Who gets that money? There's two ent- entities. The underwriters get most of it. Who's I mean, the underwriters? Chris the, whoever Sachs? brings it, whoever brings it public, uh, okay. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, Deutsche Bank. Those guys get most of it. They get most of the money. Uh, the small, the institutions that get a fair share. Does Chris get Knapp get any money. money from his cats? Yes. yes, I do. Like just for example, the owner of Bumble, Bumble, she turned into a billionaire overnight with that IPO. So yes, but the two players I, are the the company owners and the underwriters. That's who's making the money on the IPOs. The last thing I'll say about an IPO, and this is it, is that I'll use this analogy. This is an IPO. An IPO is basically the IPO comes out. It pops, and it's it's IPO ca- stands for initial purchase offer. For those who do not know, well, you're incorrect. Initial <laughs> public <laughs> offer. Yeah. <laughs> But purchase sounds fucking good. That's yeah. Uh, why not, fe- dude? Hey, it's fe- my, I, I know my truth. Okay, that's all I yeah. gotta say. So I yeah, know my two truth. out of three ain't bad. That should be two your out- truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just- that's, that's that's the name of Evan and mine's group. <laughs> We're called two out of three ain't bad. All right, <laughs> yeah. you know, watch out for us. We're on fire, dog. The, the best analogy I can get for an IPO is like it's you're in high school and the hottest girl in the school. You've been hitting on her. You're trying to pick that up. She's always with a rich kid. She's always with a rich kid. You get nothing off of her. She comes back from college. She's with a couple other rich guys. You get nothing. Hottest chick in the world. All of a sudden, you see her about 10 years later at the reunion. She's had three kids. Things didn't go so well. She's got a mustache. She's about 240. She's divorced. And all of a sudden, she's all over you. She fucking wants you badly. That's an IPO, baby. That's an IPO. It's 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 useless. It's it's not it's not it's, fun it's, anymore. It yeah, but to 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 uh, a counterpoint to your argument here, there are a lot of SPACs and IPOs being flooded on the market. However, there is IPO. There are IPOs out there that I totally believe in and that I that I'm in. For example, I bought Airbnb and the IPO was going to be at 50 and then it moved up to 70 and then day of. It went up to 146. That's what I got it at. So I went in deep because I believe in the company. And since December 10th, oh, yeah. it's up 45%. I've already trimmed sure. 25% of my position and taken profits. But then you look at like DoorDash, you know, IPOing at whatever it was, that insane amount being in the high mid 100s. I see that business being dead in a couple of months because of it being a COVID play. So you know, there's a lot of hype around IPOs, um, extremely speculative, speculative plays. Um, if you, I don't recommend ever buying one without doing a lot of DD. I did a ton on Airbnb, and I believe it is a long-term play. Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, you don't want to just buy every single IPO that comes out because there is a lot of garbage. And then the flip side is there are companies that don't IPO, and they just direct list. Um, and again, Palantir did that and it came out at 10 and it's trading at 30 bucks. So there's, there are things that, that fall through the cracks. So, yeah, but you, yeah, for a while you gotta, yeah. Depending on how old the company is. And, and I mean, there's a lot, I, the initial public offering, that's where most genuine companies go. The SPAC thing is brand new. We could talk about that next week. That's yeah, something I'm totally, I'm not sold on, but just from talking to a lot of analysts and brokers, but that's, we can talk about that next week. All but that's right. basically yeah, that's the a idea. whole other episode. Let's, yeah. let's, let's uh, jump into what we like uh, coming up this week. Is that okay? Are you guys ready for that? Yeah. Okay. So do you want to start in digital currency? Or you want to do stocks? Which one first? Why don't we do a stock, then some digital currency and back to stocks? And uh, Ooh, I like it. Ain't, Mix it two up. Out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Let's go interracial with this, huh? We'll call this the Blake Griffin special. Um, Howie, do you want to go? I mean, look, I've pitched one stock so far, DSX. I'll add one more to the portfolio. And I picked this stock basically because it's located in Manhattan Beach, California, your neck of the woods. Um, Can't afford there, but I can certainly surf there. The stock uh, is called Fisker. Uh, Sam, Fister? not Fister, not Sam, not Fister. I'm in. Buy a thousand of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Fisker. Fisker, oh. the symbol S S R. Three symbols. 
which Evan, means- can you look this up for him real quick? Yeah, I got it. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, look it up. That's it. Um, it's it's basically an EV company, which is uh, 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 it's it's electric cars, um, electric vehicles. The reason it had a big jump on on Friday was because Morgan Stanley came out and they moved it. They have Morgan Stanley has three ratings. They have neutral, outperform, and uh, strong buy. And I think they have underperform, which that it's got to be a real piece of shit or they got no investment uh, deals. Uh, I don't know if I'm even sold on the stock. I mean, the analyst came out, uh, this fucking analyst, Alan, uh, Adam Jonas, not one of the Jonas brothers, but this uh, analyst. Yeah, he will be if this thing blows up, though. This guy came out and he fucking loved it. He says they have this, it's a beautiful business model. Uh, of all the EV companies, he likes this the best. It's trading at around 19 bucks a share. He put a price target at 27 on it. Uh, had all kinds of good things to say. When he said, when something is a price target, is that what he thinks he can get up to? Yeah, yeah. price targets are a year out. So whenever you yeah. hear somebody say, this is my target on it, that means they're projecting what it's going to be at one year from now. It doesn't mean yes. it's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, yeah. So he put a price target at 27 on it. Uh, the name of the CEO is uh, Henrik, F- Henrik Fisker. And what this tells me is this. I mean, if you can read between the lines of what goes on on Wall Street <laughs> with these big firms, I'm kind of thinking that this Jonas guy, uh, Henrik, took him out to lunch and said, look, here's the deal. Uh, if you can put an outperform on this thing and help pump our fucking stock up, um, you know, maybe we'll give you some cash envelopes or something. Uh, oh, you what got I'm a saying is deal in the works, Howie. Dude, this Howie, is how it I mean, works on uh, Wall Howie, Street. dude, you're dropping hammer. Real quick, Howie, are you reading off of a computer or written notes? <laughs> written notes. There you go, Howie. Howie. Now, is it true that your <laughs> horse and carriage had a blown out hoof before, and you almost didn't make it to the show today? Guys, my technology skills are fucking improving on a I, daily basis. Well, dude, welcome, welcome. Chris, do you want to do yours before we go to Young E? Yeah. Or do you want to do Young E and close out with Chris? Uh, Lily, why don't you? You're, Lily's right. Come on, Lil E, hot, the Young G, let's hear it. Hand. Yeah, well, I mean, last week, Reddit got a hold of the weed stocks. So I've been an investor in Afria, as you all know, for like four months now. So we were up to like, I think 25 was the high and then it soared to 30. It went all the way up. It was up at, uh, let me see. The highest it went was $28.22. Now we're trading at $17.35. But what I'm saying is I think that's going to have a strong bounce back. A um, little dead cat action? Yeah. Well, I think it still has potential to, you know, even rise. And like, can you look that up? Which what what you're telling us, so they can see what who it is. Yeah, and so. what's your what's your entry on that? Um, Nine thirty three. Okay, so you're 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 way green. Yeah, I'm uh, diamond handing diamond handing that. Dude, are you ever not diamond handing? You're young. You got that diamond hands fucking hard fucking crusher, dude. That's what it is. The rest of us are just you know, fucking doing gackers of Bluetooth just to keep <laughs> our fucking excitement going. Okay, so this is, is it. it. Efren and it's a- APHA. Not Efren. APHA. What is it? Afria. It's a Afria. Afria. Okay, I'll let you guys do the, the uh, fucking Sam. Is that Advil? Advil? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, let's not forget they are. Shut up, Pony Express. <laughs> they are merged. Is that me? No, Pony Express. No, that's Howie. Howie's oh. Pony Express. Uh, they're He's merging with Tilray. To send his orders in. Okay, uh, uh, allegedly. They're allegedly merging with Tilray. So, um, you know, who knows? Who knows? They both could be going up. Uh, but there has there was a mass. Massive uh, retreat back from the the weed stocks on Friday. And yeah, I got Reddit got a hold of it. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a Reddit push. And um, like I said, I was chasing little E's action because it was so <laughs> fucking hot. I jumped on a little app for myself. I'm down, and then I did the thing I hate to do more than anything, and that's try and dig out of the hole and uh, dollar cost average. And then the stock just kept going down. So I think I'm stuck like 25 percent on it right now. But I believe in little E. 
So I will diamond hand that bitch into the fucking grave. And I, uh, I do have one more, the OCGN that I was talking about. I'm on the same two stocks, but um, so that one, that one went up 200% a couple of weeks ago. Uh, right now it's down to 1082. I bought a bunch of it. I bought a yes. bunch of it. But but listen, this is a three week hold. It's not two week hold. They have data coming out. Their clinical trials are ending. Yeah. Um, their phase three clinical trials about this vaccine, and if that gets approved by the FDA, people have hundred dollar plus targets on this. So I'm gonna hold. Wow. Have, What's uh, it at right now? It's at 1082. I bought in at 327. Damn. So. Damn. I'm, I'm down pretty big, but um still diamond handsing and see where that takes me and then if i start to lose a lot of money um i'll just trim my profits yeah is i i like it technically i said as long as it can stay around 11 it'll be okay it just can't fall because if that thing falls like nine or eight it could go back but i I, i'm holding that too man technically did you bring out break out some bollinger bands and a little stochastic indicators and give that bitch a hard look bollinger (laughs) bands that's day trading shit i I go for the real i'm I'm talking about support resistance but it's got good support right around there i think after i was was what's it 1088 afria yeah let me check i think it should open it should open hopefully around 1080 not to 11 bucks afria is at 1694 but uh, oh not afria i'm fucking ocgn yeah that's at 1028 yeah okay so those are my two still riding them all right so hey uh can you guys email me your choices should we put them in the description no they they gotta listen for them right is that how it goes I don't know. No, no, no. They should be tagged in the description for sure. Okay. We will put it on Twitter. Yeah. Put it on Twitter, huh? Yeah, Uh, yeah. How about that? Technology right there, baby. Put that shit on Twitter. Please check out Howie's MySpace. Uh, (laughs) So he's there putting up his latest picks. Um, Chris, you want to go next or do you want me to go? No, I'll go. Um, first of all, um, Zeke, and of course, did its thing last week, uh, barely, barely narrow, uh, narrowing out DSX, Howie's pick. And before I get into this, I must, um, I must say this again. In fact, I put it on the wall. I don't know if you guys can see it here because I constantly need to remind myself, but it's right here. Um, and the quote is very simple. Kid, you're on a roll. Enjoy it while it lasts because it never does. That's the great Lou Mannheim from the movie Wall Street. He's a personal hero of mine, even though he's not a real person. But (laughs) I am constantly reminded of his quotes, so I never get too cocky. So needless to say, I've been on a heater. Um, I do have a couple- (laughs) I do have a couple of plays. Is that little Johnny fuck not? What is, what's- Little Tommy fuck bam? Little Johnny fuck not. <laughs> I I I am I did not trim my position on ZKIN. I'm going to stay long on it. Um, I have mentioned a couple of stocks in the past, um, but there's Zekin right there. Um, it did have a nice eight percent after hours pop as well after doing twenty three percent up on the day. Of course, Sam, you didn't buy it. I don't recommend buying it now at this price, but I, it is a hold for me. But to go to my picks. Um, I am going to read off the internet as opposed to Howie's crib sheets for this pick. Um, I like a company called Srax. Uh, they're a fintech company. Um, fintechs? Fin- <laughs> fintech, financial fintech. technology. Um, inter- internet advertising and platform technology company. Um, so they launched a new product and it's basically a user-based subscription service for retail investors and they are connecting those with larger companies so the idea is put retail investors that have money in touch with people that have a product to sell um do you mind pulling up the chart lily yeah it's rax it's s-r-a-x i'm actually underwater a bit on it i think i bought at like 5 30 maybe 5 40 is that a Uh, weekly is that a weekly? No, this is a long-term play for sure. I don't. Yeah, man, I'm talking about the chart. How long? Oh, pull up five, like a year chart. Days. Pull up. Year. There he goes. So is that a yeah, year? as you, that's a year. What? What does it start? What year does it start? Uh, 2020. Oh, start. That's sorry, a, a year ago. That, all right, that's a new start. That's a new company. Shit. That's. Yeah. 
2012. Do, 2012. Bud? Oh, 2012. Okay. Okay. What do they do, Chris? Hold, hold on. Um, SRAC, so what they are is they're a company that um, has a group of retail investors that pay to subscribe to their service. And it's, you know, it's basically an information tech play. But what they're doing is they're connecting that service with buyers and sellers of um, major stock companies. So it's an information play, but it's a, uh, uh, an SAAS play. Um, oh God, uh, to, sales as a service subscription. Um, you just jizz in your pants right there? <laughs> no, I mean, I oh, always- God. I, <laughs> Oh God. Oh, oh. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, anything, anything FinTech. If you right. owned, you can throw a fucking fintech? dart. You can throw a dart at FinTech in the last year. What and is it's that? Up 300%. Again, and I fucked up SAAS, which I always do, but it, it means software as a service. So it's, um, yeah, and I, and I agree. There are a lot of fintech plays that you can just throw a, a dart at. And people are asking me, you know, what are, you, what are your long-term holdings? I have a lot of fintech in my long-term holdings. Like, you know- That, ETF, that ETF you own is all fintech. Correct. Uh, yeah. That would be uh, ARK K. ARK, that's a fintech, so, yeah. Yep. And so that, that's my play that I like long. Um, I also uh, am still on KLDO, the microbiome play. So if I was going to offer anybody two long plays, it would be KLDO and SRAX, in addition to holding Zekin, in addition to keeping your eye on GMBL, because they did, after GMBL popped, they did do um, a share offering. And if I might circle back just a little bit, remember how we were talking about like GameStop flying through the roof and everybody saying, why aren't these idiots doing a share offering with this massive amount of money they've just collected? It came out recently that uh, Ryan Cohen, the, you know, who's on the board, um, he basically said they, they didn't feel like it was ethically the right thing to do because I don't think, I mean, I think they knew just like everybody else, it, it was a short squeeze and the stock was inflated artificially. So I will commend those guys for not doing a smash and grab and pulling out a bunch of money and further dropping the stock at that price. So, I don't think they could have. I don't think they, they could have. I think there was a bank out there that probably would have done it. Yeah, probably like fucking Bank of uh, Western Nigeria. I mean, not a <laughs> bank to bank. One of these Nigerian princes, GameStop yeah. got an email. Hello, I'm in a Nigerian princess. I have $10 million I want to give you. Yeah. Well, dude, That's those are all be. great picks, dude. We don't so, know, so go ahead. We don't know if they're great picks. That's the other thing. Okay, I, won't say that I can't. I can't you. keep going. Neff just went over thirty-two fucking stocks. If I know three, <laughs> uh, again, we don't. We do our due diligence. I've done mine, even though I could barely get those words out. Um, I, I'm, I'm long on these, but I don't want our readers just jumping in saying, "Oh, Neff's, Neff's, Neff can't lose." I mean, he just gave me gamble. He just gave me fucking Zeke and. They're probably yeah, dude. Yeah. right now. You're going to be like life. Michael Jordan. Every time he played, he knew somebody's watching him for the first time. Dude. That's that's right. Joe DiMaggio said that. Okay. No, Michael yeah. Jordan said Joe, that. Joe DiMaggio said listen, that. Listen, dude. Look it listen, up. Dude. You want to bet? Listen, you want to bet? Howie thinks you put out 32 stocks because he's using an Abacus <laughs> Hold on. Hold to on. count all of his stuff. You want to bet on that? <laughs> No, I don't want to bet on that. You owe me ten dollars anyway. I owe you five dollars. Joe DiMaggio said there may be a kid out there that's never seen me play. That's why I play as hard as I do. Okay, Michael Jordan. If he said it, he ripped off Joe D. Okay, dude. You know black people can't rip off white people. You know that, right? Jesus, Evan. I'm sorry. His generation's very offended by that. Um. <laughs> So can I go? Can I go, Cat Queen? Are you it, done? It is Joe got Maggio, one. by the way. Oh! <laughs> did you hear what Lil E just said? Yeah, I did. I did hear what Lil E said. I just yeah. want to. I just have one other thing I want to point out. Because Lil have, Lil E, the young G, dude. I just gave you the name, dog. They got bam, triple E. One other thing I want to point out because we haven't discussed it is there are. This is earnings week. 
for a couple of my holdings, specifically PLTR, the Obama killer, who I've told you guys to buy. You probably won't buy it for ethical reasons because you don't think Obama's or Osama's dead. He is. PLTR killed him. Anyway, there's an oh, earnings. That's so cute. There's an earnings on Tuesday. I just say that to piss off like 10 people that says Osama bin Laden's not dead. To comment PLTR on. dropped a lot. It's down to like 30. It did. It did. So here's the thing. There's been a drop in PLTR, but the reporting earnings on Tuesday. God, this. I feel like I'm on fast money right now, and somebody needs to slide in with a dick joke. I'm getting so a little So what do we do? Do we, buy, do we buy calls or puts? Calls here's or puts. Here's the thing. Neither. I think the play is a straddle or a strangle because okay what's a straddle what's a strangle and it all sounds like bdsm to me <laughs> a straddle is what you do somebody's before, dying before Either you way. put the roofie in sounds like strangle. something marilyn manson does to his new girlfriend what are we talking a about a straddle here? is before you put the ghb into her drink a strangle okay. is what you do after the ghb has hit her okay okay, okay. <laughs> and we've just been canceled next <laughs> A straddle is when we were you doing buy, so good. Is we were doing buy. well. It was fun. Poor we were doing so well. Poor E's about to get kicked out of college. <laughs> okay, not in college. Okay, this, well this, then you're good. <laughs> this might be this might be jumping the gun a little bit for our readers because these are are extremely technically advanced plays. This is not making a put. This is not making a call. This is not buying a share. A straddle and strangle are volatility plays. That's when you think. This shit's going to fucking move. It could go up. It could go down. So what you do is you buy a put and a call at the, at the same price if you want to straddle. You know, if you want to just get on, go for a ride. And a strangle. That's if it's really volatile. Correct. But a strangle is also a vol volatility play where you buy a put and a call further from a, uh, apart from each other. So you want to get what's on this side and you, of the put and you want to get what's on this side of the call. So you don't want it to hit what's in between. Am I explaining that right, Howie? A little bit, yeah. A bit, okay. yeah. So, a, well, a, Howie, was he was he got wrong? Well, no. I mean, it, it, a, a straddle, a straddle is you want huge, huge volatility either way. Um, a strangle, you don't. Correct. You, you, correct. Like you don't that's want why, it to move. Correct. The, that that's why this is the put side. This is the call side. What I want to have happen is action on the left of the put or action on the right of the call. And that's a so, straddle. That's a strangle. That's a strangle. A, a straddle is you put these hands together and I've got the same call and I've got the same put. See, I'm over here. This is the put yeah. side. Yeah. This is the call side. Hey, yeah. how you doing? What yeah. I want it to do is just go parabolic in either direction and then I get fucking paid. Uh, Chris, little E, the total G, uh, just gave his picks. Uh, you know, grandpa gave his picks. So everyone's gave their picks. Uh, so that's it. You got some great picks. I want to get into a little cryptocurrency talk. And I, guys, I, honestly, I've been getting a little shit. I, I am not an expert by any means. I am just been studying this and I have feelings on this stuff. So, you know, a lot of people uh, are coming from the, you know, the whole GameStop, uh, you know, Wall Street Beats. That's Wall Street bets uh, kind of thing, smash and grab with digital concert, uh, currency. And I totally understand that. But just know that Bitcoin is not the coin to do that with. Bitcoin is the sun that all the other shit coins go around. It is, it will always go up a little down, but it's just going up, up, up. All of the, the crypto pirates have stated that they believe Bitcoin will get up to two. Anywhere from 150 to 200,000 by the end of the year. That's what they're talking about. Now, so that'll be 4X from here. Yes, that's what they're talking about. Now, now Dogecoin, right, is something you smash and grab. That is done specifically for that. If you just hold on to a tool, you're going to take a bing. So if you did invest in it, a lot of you guys are freaking out. I would just hold on because it's going to go down. And what's going to happen is, is all, all these, uh, you know, guys that blew it up before are going to do it again. Then once it shoots up, get out, get out, get your did money. You sell, get out. Oh, what did you, did you sell your doge? I, I still have it. So I'm waiting for it to bounce back up because I, I know it will bounce back up. So a lot of people, I just talked to my brother today. 
they're all freaking out again because Bitcoin's so expensive. I can't say this enough. Just like how we talked about how that guy at UPS or FedEx just got a little bit of uh, of stock every time he got a paycheck. Buy just a little bit of Bitcoin, just a little bit. Even if it's $50, $20, $100, whatever you can afford, every paycheck. If you got a little cash left over, buy a little, okay? Buy a little at a time. And it's not a sell, man. This is like, hold on, and you only sell if the world's on fire, man, and you got nothing else left. You hold on to this because by the end of this year, it could be 200000 right? But that's just this year. I mean, the, the numbers get thrown out by the people who've been talking about Bitcoin forever is $3 million, $30 million, $300 million. Because once, the, again, and I've said it before, once this stimulus package comes out, it's going to destroy the dollar even more. I mean, when you print $2 trillion worth of money, you're just making it useless. Yes. Well, the biggest thing that convinces me. I had my hand on. Is when you have the nope, shady. Can't get queenie, we, cat queen. Hold on. No, when, you, we, when you have Seniors all those, first. When you got all the major investment banks this week coming out. <laughs> Morgan Stanley, Deutsche Bank. All these big guys are coming out and they're investing billions of dollars in this thing right now. So, I mean, look, if these guys are doing it, come on, man. They're the fucking biggest crooks on Wall Street. They see the writing on the wall. Yeah, and Morgan Stanley just did some PR on this, and they're talking about making a sizable investment in Bitcoin. So I agree. I'm bullish on Bitcoin. I hold. I never sell. But I disagree that you're with your thesis that the Fed's printing money and these stimulus checks are going to devalue the dollar. I agree it will happen in the short term. I don't think it's going to happen. And I think the market is going to keep on shooting up. At some point, this house of cards is going to fall. Because it's just going to get to the point where there's just not enough money to print to cover the debt. And there's a lot of people on the sidelines that agree with you. I'm not that guy. I'm that guy that sees an angle to make some action while the market's hot. I'm going to go in and smash and grab. That doesn't mean I'm not going to protect my, my, my gains, you know? So if I, this is me personally, I don't think this bull run is even going to start slowing down anytime soon because once COVID slows down, everything opens back up again. So all these depressed value stocks, they're going to start shooting through the roof. That's how I believe. I'm talking about this. I, I understand that. Yes. Yeah. They are, they are, they are connected. Right. But I'm really telling you, I'm just telling you like the dollar value. And, you know, again, this is Matt Ky- Max Kaiser. I respect him a lot. He's been talking about wall street, talking about Bitcoin forever. He does have an app <coughs> wallet. So he has a little skin in the game to get everybody into Bitcoin, but he's been talking about banks are going to have to start doing negative interest which means they're fucking bleeding so badly that they need they're gonna start pulling money from you to cover their the the cover everything that's going on so that's what the that's what the crypto pirates are telling me uh, across the board okay that the dollar it just can't go on forever it just can't so for me it's like gold silver i know silver was force pumped by these guys that want everyone to go to silver to get off GameStop, but gold, silver, and digital currency is where it at. Now, again, I'm telling you what my strategy is right now, and this is if you got a little cash to play with, is to find the next AVE, right? A-A-V-E, that, that token. What is that one? Okay, and there's practical uses for these tokens, okay? They're used in some sort of internet or virtual reality or some sort of <coughs> business on the internet those are the that's why dogecoin there's no practical purpose for it. even the guy who made it goes i have no clue why this thing is crushing it so hard so i'm looking for the next one there's a couple that i like 
again, invest at your own thing and you got to do your own work. Okay. So here's a invest couple. It. Oh, go okay. Ahead. Invest at your own risk. Okay. And do see your own re research. I, there's a, so what I'm looking for right now are the 30 cent token uh, coins, 40 cent coins, 50 cent coins. Okay. And do these coins have practical value? All right. So let's go to Ave or whatever it's called. Okay. Now, if you look at right now, cryptocurrency, they're all down because everybody's doing smashing grabs right now. Right. That's fine. Bitcoin will always be fine. You're going to see them fluctuate, but it's long game here. Okay. So Ave is an Ethereum token that is Pow that powers Ave, a decentralized non-custodial money market protocol, which where users can participate as depositors or borrows. So this is like a borrowing coin right here, right? So there's a practical use for it. So where are the other ones that I like? And I put my money in, okay? The next one I want to get into, and they're all down a little bit. If you would talk to me yesterday, you'd be like, holy shit, it, this is what's going to happen because you have this smash and grab money coming in but in the long run these are coins that people nerd dorks will be using on the internet to participate in their nerd dork activities okay so what i really like is decentraland okay mana m-a-n-a -A. and the reason i like this coin because right now it's trading at 28 it was up to like 35 i think like, yeah, I think it got up to 37 actually this week. Yep. It's at 28 right now, right? The reason I like this coin, because one, it's an Ethereum coin. And two, so these these nerd dorks, right? They are they're now buying up virtual land. Okay. They're buying virtual land, creating virtual houses virtual business they're playing farmville or the sims that's exactly what i'm thinking this farmville is the coin they big got big. to use to get in and this is how what everything sold in in that is this mana coin so this is just at the beginning that of this this phenomenon it's only gonna grow as as everything goes more and more tech as like esports get bigger the notion of owning land, owning a farm in virtual reality will get bigger. That's the worst fucking thing not, I've ever heard in my life. But I'm not laughing at him. I'm laughing at this probably right. I, yeah. I, I see it happening. Yeah. 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 Okay. How you not sold, are you? That is yeah, but, shit. Yeah, but I, I guarantee you heart that, that Howie... Wouldn't believe that people, I mean, like, dude, I just, I, it's not for me. I'm not saying it's for me. I'm never going to buy virtual land. But no, but you're, you're right. I agree with you here. Look, the other day I had a guy on my basketball team. He's a doctor and he sent me a Bitcoin that they're going to use just in medicine. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he sent me the symbol. Now I'll, show, I'll have to get it. What is it? Show. I hope you fouled him hard. <laughs> what is flagrant just for that it's it's uh it's in my it's in my phone so i can't really get to it right now you asshole but i'll text it to you after the show after the show i'm gonna text you it had four okay symbols. along the lines of this is district ox district ox it got up to 42 cents it's now 28 cents okay are these all on ethereum that you have to trade through what's the district end? Ox is an Ethereum token that powers a network of decentralized marketplace and communities called districts. Again, nerd, nerd dork shit, right? And the token is required for application to the district registry and is used to signal support or disapproval for proposals made Don't by network. Don't have a seizure. Don't have a seizure. It's just Ox coin. <laughs> I'm just telling you all. That this is the thing that, because if you go back, it's like, it's, I'm just telling you, the key is to find the next Avier or whatever it's called. That's okay, the key. Can I ask a question about this? Because I got a tutorial about this and I learned about this and we have our readers asking as well about staking. Do you feel like that's something you could 
discuss or is that something we should bring in to talk about state i have somebody bring in to talk about fine i'll talk about it and i'll tell everybody what it is so what it is is this uh staking uh, for you for you howie is basically when you say all right here's the deal i'm gonna buy your kitty coin but i have to hold it for five years and i'm not allowed to withdraw it so it's like basically a, a certificate of deposit inside ethereum yeah separate token that's what it's like a, it's like a five-year cd correct but my buddy did it he bought some fucking tokens that were like 20 cents and he put in five grand and he's all the way up to 40 grand but he can't pull it out yet so who see, knows I, I don't see like i don't think you have to wait that long see he's for me man, five years yeah i i like dude if you play it right and you find the right one these things, dude, Avie went up from 50 cents to $500 in one year. You if you bought 10,000 of those, you would have made basically $4.5 million around there. All you have to do is, I'm just telling you, start looking around. What are the practical uses for this coin? That's why Doge got nothing. There's no Doge. Dogecoin doesn't have any practical uses. It's literally Elon, Elon Musk fucking with everybody. Yeah, he did it again, too. Yeah, he- yeah, and that's why you hold it. And when it pounces, when it bounces, sell it off if you have it right now. Because And then you just play the, the, the Chris Neff smash and grab where you're up for four days and- just waiting for it to go up a penny and just keep rolling. You're just... <laughs> Yeah, come on, gacking, gacking, and come coin. on, Dodge Coin. <laughs> let's, go. let's go, Kitty Coin. Come on, baby. So that's what I'm looking at. I own a couple. I own a couple that I like. Now, I told you guys before about what they were gonna do with uh, XRP. It's gone up again today. It's like this thing. Why are you mad at us? Why are you mad at us? I'm not mad at you, dude. I'm not mad at you at all. I'm just telling you, I'm passionate that this coin has gone up. It's gone up again, man. And it's it, this is the banker's coin. Okay. This coin, all the banks are trying to get together. And the reason I think if you can find somewhere you can buy it, I don't even know if it's possible anymore because they've locked it down. Okay. If you can grab it, grab as much as you can. In my humble opinion, do your own research, but they're going to try to blow this coin up. I think it would all be helpful if we did get a staking expert in here or just somebody like that did the tutorial I did where I got to see these people on Ethereum transfer money with the gas, all that stuff. Because yeah, we are and that's getting what a lot- gassing is. I had some guy going, Sandra Crypto guy doesn't even know what gassing is. It's like, dude, it's like, it's the amount of money and it's basically paying the for the effort of right. putting it on the fucking blockchain. That, right, but that, gas prices rise and fall and there's Depending on how times. much traffic there is. Yeah, but so again- So I've learned, guys, if you're going to pull your money out, your gas prices are going to be higher towards the end of the month because that's when everybody's pulling their money out. So if you do it earlier or later after the, the end of the beginning of the month, you're going to- pay lower gas prices all right can i bring up one thing that's always blew my mind about gas prices no you cannot you know the gas station at san vicente in fairfax yeah is that where you got your crystal meth no (laughs) without fail you could drive by that gas station no matter what time of day one of the busiest intersections in los angeles and gas prices are two dollars higher than any gas station in this fucking town it's god's own private mystery I'll never understand why. And I oh, take dude, a just right over here. Day. There's one that's 40 cents less it's than the one across though. the street. It's $2 more no matter what. And I'm just like, how the fuck are these people in business? They're gouging. They're gouging like a motherfucker. Dude, yep. listen, you want to be honest, think? guys? You want to invest in a business that never goes down? <clears throat> Go into psychic readings in Hollywood. I've never seen one of those stores close. I mean, dude. I've seen Starbucks close down before a psychic reading does because those gypsies, that's where they're running hand jobs and cocaine, dog. Bro, I got a girl that drops tarot tarot, like fucking fire and she's worth every $80 hour session I've ever had. Okay, so now we just learned a little bit more about the cat man, okay? He also (laughs) goes to psychics. Yeah. All right. Sick fuck. Yeah. 
Hey, dude, you keep this up. Pretty soon your name's going to be Heavy Flow, okay? We got Little E, <laughs> the Sweet G, <laughs> his good buddy Heavy Flow over here. Uh, guys, fuck, I always forget about this. Can we uh, do an opening? A real Ah, fuck. All right, we'll play at the end. Guys, Fuck next it, do week, it live. Do it live. We'll do it live. <laughs> we'll do it live. Guys, thanks for tuning in to uh, Cash Daddies. The feedback has been wonderful. Uh, you know, we're trying. We're learning. I feel like today was a we had a nice little groove. I appreciate you guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. Again, do your own research. If you'd like to see me live, please go to uh, – I'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina this weekend, uh, this whole week, which will be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, which is the 18th through the 20th. I'll be there with my friend John Toll, and I'll be there with – Jessica Wellington. And then uh, then I got a bunch of shows coming up. I got uh, March, what is it, 4th through the 6th, Howie, that we're all at the uh, the dojo in Morris Plains. Go to tiffscomedy.com. The dojo comedy is getting its own website. Go and go to Tiff Comedy. See myself, Howie, and our good friend, my good friend, Tino Sanchez. And then the following week, I believe will be the 10th and the 11th of March, I will be at Float Fest in Texas, so I'll, my site should be up. My site should be up to be able to get those dates. So, guys, you got anything you want to put? No, I'm good. I'll be at uh, Madame Valentina getting my 89.99 reading on Saturday <laughs> on PCH in Seal Beach. Sorry, that's she's awesome. Good. She's good. So you go in there for 80 ducks, 80 bucks. You just blast 80 that ducks. He, he gives them 80 <laughs> ducks. He goes <laughs> down to the floor. I go in there. I go in there and say, Get, guess which stock is going to blow up next week. Is it my left hand or my you right? Go to, you go in there and you light out. She just blasts that knowledge right out of you. That's what it is. Wow. That's what it is. Oh, hey, uh, Lil E, the total G, tell all the ladies what bar you're going to be at so that you're buying shots. <laughs> you let me know where I'll you are. The, uh, I'll be at the sandbar this weekend. <laughs> yes, sandbar. Yeah, Never going hit, up, there hit up Lil G's, Lil E's, looking for action. All right, guys, this has been a great show. Again, thank you so much for helping us get in the top one, 125. Uh, it is not easy to get in there. If you guys knew how many podcasts there are and the fact that we even made it up and uh, a word on the street is the bye guys weren't too happy that we flew by them, you know, uh, but we did. And uh, I'm a, there's the nice straight by guy only. What's that? Does the straight by guy only. Yeah. You know what it is, what it is, dude. Are you a by guy mole in our own podcast? That's what I want. No, to dude, but I'm a weirdo. It's kicked the can pretty far down the line. Okay, so don't worry about it. Yeah, I do want to say thank you to all the readers. Um, it does mean a lot. Why so, are we even asking them for a name? We just call the them the readers. They're I, just no, the we'll readers. Put up, we'll put up the poll just so it's fair because there, there, there was a lot of creative input in and some people were very passionate about their picks. We'll put up the poll early this week. We'll let you guys decide. But it does mean a lot. We try to get to all your DMs. There are some that I am not qualified to answer and uh, I will get to them. And, and if I don't know the question, um, I do a little research before I get back to you. So if there are some I haven't answered, it's because of that reason. But I want to say thank you. Listen, yeah. guys and ladies, just know every DM, every tweet, every comment keeps Chris Knapp a little farther from the rope. Okay. So <laughs> just every time you do, he's like the little kid for a coffee, coffee a day. You can keep <laughs> fucking Chris Knapp off the rope. So your comments, anything you want, just help us keep Chris with us. Cause right. without him, this right. fucking thing show the wheels right. will fall off. Right. Turn into a total, it's going to be an INX. INX. Uh, in excess. <laughs> now I quit. In excess. <laughs> Quick 79 cents for a day story because it is one of the creepiest things that's ever happened to me. All right. I, w I graduated college and I graduated in like mid nineties and I had to find an apartment and I was living in New York city and I answered an ad like uh, back in the day uh, off the, some like an actual newspaper, come see my apartment. And I got there and there was a guy and he didn't speak very good English and he showed me around the place and he showed me the room that he was advertising for 700 and it was a closet and you know those like the light bulbs that it's just the light bulb and it has the string it was yeah. one of those 
Oh, that's right. Goes, before before you, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> total murder job. Total fucking, yeah, James Gum silence. The what do you stuff. better call Sal? So anyway, he goes, I want, I want you to meet my son before you decide to take the place. And I go, oh, you have a son? And he goes, yeah, I want you to come meet him. And then I go, well, where is it? There was only two rooms. And he walks me over to the mantle and he goes, he's right here. And I looked at it and it was one of those for 79 cents a day, you can adopt a child and support a child. And he shows it to me and he goes, that's my son. I, I, I spend a buck a week, you know, for his clothes. Um, uh, he should be visiting soon. And I was just like, I'm going to die in this fucking apartment. Oh, yeah. Oh, it. Is his mother <laughs> upstairs dead as a fucking I've mommy? I've never run out of a building so fast. A buck a life. week? What do you got him dressed in? A diaper? Jesus just, Christ. It, had a, it was a picture of him. And it was like the card that they send you that says, thank you for adopting, uh, wow. you know, the kid. Scared the well, shit. Well, you're lost. It sounds like there's going to be a ton of BJs with that. <laughs> guys, this has been Cash Daddies. Thank you guys so much. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you, man. To get into that, did we talk about on the show the montage? Did we talk about it? Or did we talk before that? This is the ending so. that will never end. Okay. <laughs> so basically, we got in a montage, a uh, compilation of people talking about game stock and all the bs and you know the guy the people put together was really well done but i mean for this show to only be episode eight to already be in there with a lot of big names in this in this genre was very cool and uh all three we'll of you guys sure we'll, uh, are great yeah, at this you, show and uh, no not only that in. they they amazingly made you look like a genius explaining shorting so that was the best part of the whole thing well, that's some fucking uh, editing. That was you, cutting. <laughs> that was that's some chop, editing. chop, chop, chop. Would they deep fake me, man? Would they deep fake me? Um, I don't know how they did it, but it sounded real. It sounded so like guys. Again, about. this was recorded Sunday, February fourteenth, Valentine's Day. Hope you guys had a great Valentine's Day, ladies. I hope you get, uh, got a ton of flowers, and uh, we'll see you soon. Remember, go to iTunes. If you're on Apple, rate and review. Give us five stars. The best in reviews will read on the uh, air. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Howie. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Lil E. Uh, and we'll Good see you guys soon. Good luck, guys. Tomorrow. Make no that trading. money. Bye.